Hi, my name is Sue Shoemaker, and I'm a member of the Bridgeview Community Church of God in Illinois, where brother and sister Scaria and their children, until they married, attended for over 35 years. There's so much to be said about Brother Scaria, I'm going to have to look away to my notes. But I want to say first, we have missed you for the past two years, Brother S., and we will continue missing you now. I've stated that you were members of our church for over 35 years. I don't remember the exact time you started there. It seems like you were always there. You sat on the left side as you faced the pulpit about halfway back. You answered questions brought up in Sunday school class so thoroughly and knowledgeably. A few years after you began attending, we went through a period of not having a minister while we were in between ministers. Various guest ministers would come on Sunday, but we had no one to conduct our midweek Bible study. I remembered your biblical knowledge and mentioned to a church council member, Bill Wingo, that you might be a good person to fill in for us. Bill said he had been thinking the same thing. He might have even spoken to you about it. But I remember clearly going up and sitting on a bench behind you one Sunday and asking if you would teach our Bible study. And in your succinct but positive way, you said, I will do that. You did, and how fortunate for all of us who sat under your teaching. I have never heard the Bible taught in such a way, especially being historically accurate right up into modern times. Susie cautioned you often in those first years to speak slowly so we could understand you. But the more excited you got about the Bible, the faster you spoke. You would look around and say, you are with me, yes? Most often we were, but sometimes, well, sometimes. Once he was teaching us about putting on the armor of God, and he had Susie draw a large poster board picture of a man with armor on. Brother S. would point to areas of the armor as he spoke. One area, perhaps the belt of truth, was not as prominent as he thought it should be when he pointed to it, and he said in his very serious voice, she is not a very good illustrator. We all laughed and laughed, and then he sheepishly smiled and laughed as well. Brother S. then became a Sunday school teacher. Some people teach God's word according to accuracy, some according to speculation. Brother S. was accuracy all the way. Another memory comes from Michael Rice, son of one of our ministers, who said, Oh, how in I enjoyed sitting under his adult Sunday school teachings. But I will never forget the time he was attempting to find the word in English for a male goat, and he was at a loss. He ended up saying, he hot. He then became tickled at himself, and the whole class joined in with laughter. What a great man of God. Brother Scaria was elected to the church council and remained a member for many, many years. His wisdom was so well respected. We thoroughly enjoyed and learned from his mission work and church building in India. What a true love of his life. He would go to India for months at a time every year and bring back pictures and stories and sermons that we loved seeing and hearing about. His brother was such a well-known author and evangelist in India, and when he passed away, Brother Scaria took over his duties and administrative responsibilities from here in the States and on his visits there. The souls that were saved, the churches that were built, were amazing in numbers. He told us of people walking for three days to get to the services, and of their feeding hundreds who attended the meetings. We saw pictures of the lines of people and the throngs who came to the services. My own doctor is from South India, and I once asked him if he had ever heard of a Reverend Scaria, fully expecting an answer that said, Do you know there are well over one billion people in India? Instead, he said, Yes, many people there have heard of the Scaria family and their evangelism, especially in the Raipur area. Their meetings are like the Billy Graham Crusades of India. Brother S. frequently filled in at our church for our pastors when they were on vacation or sick, and his theology knowledge was once again shown to the congregation. He was inspired and energized for the Lord. He was serious about God and let you know it. There was right and there was wrong, and he taught it.
Still, he could laugh at himself, and his laugh was somewhere between a delicate tee-hee and a Santa-like ho-ho-ho, as he sometimes shook when he laughed. You had to laugh with him, even if you didn't know what he was laughing about. You were a welcome guest at their home. Betty Johnson Gonzalez said, They could not thank me enough when I entered their home as a visitor, when it was I who should have been thanking them for having me. And you cannot speak of Brother and Sister Scaria without thinking of prayer. They prayed. When they prayed, things happened. In today's age, we are too guilty of saying, I will pray for you, and moving on, forgetting about that promise, maybe writing on Facebook, I will pray for you, and moving on. But these two followed through, and you knew it, and you felt it. When my daughter moved to Michigan, they told me every Sunday of their prayers for her. When I asked Brother S. to be a pallbearer for my father, he said I would be honored for such a Christian man. Speaking here today, I can say I am honored to speak of such a great, godly Christian man who spread the gospel so mightily. Brother S., you've impacted so many lives, and we love you dearly.